the light. Be all right. Sing it, Agnes. Oh, tonight, maybe they'll come true. Oh, and the end. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry, you absolute dog. Go away, Donna. I'm, I'm reviewing Star Trek. I can't give you any attention right now. I'm reviewing Star Trek. I can't. I can't right now. I've stopped singing, I swear. Jerry, no way. Did you just give us another completely entertaining Star Trek episode with no, like, really big conflictions? I have nothing to say about that episode that I'm mad, upset about. I was completely entertained the whole entire time. This is ridiculous, okay? Is this the Jean Favreau Filoni of Star Trek? Is Terry Matalas going to come in and, and show run all the major flagship shows of Kurtzman Trek and actually make them good, decent, and entertaining? Because holy crap, we don't get anything, uh, you know, surprising in Star Trek anymore. It seems like everything is spoiled these days. I was literally just complaining in a previous video about how everything's spoiled, and it has been announced officially that we're going to get the entire Next Generation cast for next season. Next Generation of Picard is probably going to be one of the best things in Star Trek ever. I could just smell it coming from a mile away. The whole Next Gen cast is coming back. Terry Matalas is already on Twitter, like, talking to people about how things are going to go. Worf is going to look like Worf. Oh! I think we should all be excited for Star Trek Picard season three, considering season two has just been an absolute blast. This is a brilliant piece of Star Trek, just completely entertaining. Every episode is just, mmm, it's good. This is good ass Star Trek. And Terry Matalas is like rubbing his hands together evilly because guys, remember that kind of awful mid that we got last season in Star Trek Picard season one? It was decent, okay? And it paid a lot of homage to Nemesis and it, you know, it kind of wrapped a a lot of things up with Nemesis, but at the same time, it had a handful of really bad, egregious problems. And you know how at the end of the episode, they had those two Romulan twins who were around for the whole season, and it seemed like one of them was going to be a reoccurring character? That dude just kind of ran off at the end of the season, didn't get killed like his sister did, and I thought he was going to be back this season. No, he's just retconned at this point. Just a lame-ass, fake-ass character. They're not even following Soji this season. They're using the actress who plays Soji to play Adam Soon's daughter in Adam Soon and his daughter actually played a huge role in this episode. If you're wondering, Ganon, where's my neck tattoo? You're just being a coward. You are being a and you don't want to get a neck tattoo, you are scared. Where is it? I'm actually going to get it like today, not tomorrow even, like today, because it is currently three in the morning. Today, as I am recording this Thursday, I have an appointment today to hopefully go and get that tattoo. So hopefully you will see a vlog within the next three or four days. And also I have a video about the Enar coming. Let us get into the review. Season two, episode six of Star Trek Picard called Two of One. Now this episode is called Two of One because in the last episode, Episode. Agnes, of course, shot the Borg Queen and killed her to defend a French policeman who had a nicotine addiction so that things would not, you know, mess up in the timeline. Because the Borg Queen was dying, I almost feel like Agnes kind of let a little bit of herself be taken by the Borg Queen. She was slightly assimilated. The Borg Queen's consciousness and sentience is now in Agnes Gerardi, and it is now going to be probably one of the best plot devices of the season. So many things happen in this episode as a result of it. The whole cast is at this gala in this episode because their mission is to protect the motivation, essentially, of Renee Picard. Renee Picard is a very anxious woman. She is very scared about this Europa mission. By the way, in the last review, people did educate me that Europa is like a moon of Jupiter and that Renee is actually going to go visit probably like a moon of Jupiter or something, and that's another reason why the episode was titled Fly Me to the Moon. They're here to protect her from Q and his meddling. Now, something that's a little bit confusing to me is how Q just kind of showed up at the beginning of this season, almost as though he was like a slight ally to Picard. I know he was very pissed and angry with him, but it almost seemed like he was guiding Picard into a particular direction. No matter what kind of motives Q has, usually he is somewhat, at the end of the day, kind of an ally to Picard, like he's allowing Picard to play in his hands, but it seems now like he's maliciously interfering with what's going on. Like he actually wants to see Picard fail in a way, because last episode he met with Dr. Adam Soong, who I was just calling Andrew the whole last review because I'm
fucking bozo. Adam Soong was spoken to by Q and was told by Q, we learned in this episode, to go and get rid of an obstacle, to basically get rid of Rene Picard. And the way that Adam Soon attempts to get rid of Rene Picard is absolutely hilarious. It's probably one of the most hilarious things to happen in Star Trek in a while. And also, Dr. Adam Soon's character is just fire this episode. Brent Spiner really brings it to this new, abrasive, psychopath character, essentially. Like, Dr. Adam Soon is crazy. Crazy. We learned so much about him. Let's talk about this little gala, though, because there's a bunch of stuff that happens here. Agnes Gerardi, in order to help the party get into the gala undetected, she gets intentionally caught by security. There was this little line that the Borg Queen said in this episode, like, oh, and you got intentionally caught. That's a clever plan. And I almost thought that that was a little bit of a reference to Voyager and how Janeway got caught intentionally multiple times by the Borg Queen that one time when she and the Voyager crew got intentionally assimilated and then the second time when Admiral Janeway came from the future and got intentionally assimilated. She got intentionally captured. She's struggling to get to the command console to actually help Picard and Rios and them in time for them to get in. They're going to totally get caught by security so she looks upon the Borg Queen for help. The Borg Queen is totally antagonizing her, egging her on to do things in this episode and there's actually a reason for that but the fact that the Borg Queen's consciousness is in Agnes now doesn't just mean that the Borg Queen is just sitting in her brain. Agnes, for all intents and purposes, is essentially like Loki of Vanilla Borg. She's got technology and nanobots inside her, and she does crazy stuff this episode. For instance, Agnes just kind of breaks the handcuffs like that. She, like, she's metahuman. She has super strength, and she broke from the handcuffs to get to the console to help her friends. Not only that, but there is a scene in this episode where Agnes needs to cause a distraction for Picard, essentially, because, actually, I'll explain this first before we get into that. Adam soon comes to the gala. He confronts Picard because he tells Picard that he's there to, you know, eliminate the a possibility that Renee Picard is going to complete her mission because Adam soon, as we learn in this episode, is super obsessed with saving his Blade Runner-esque daughter. And he basically goes up to Picard and snitches on him, just snitches on him. They have this incredible confrontation though. I love both Patrick Stort's performance in this instance and I love Brent Spine portrayal of this asshole psychopathic, aggressive character. Somebody who's liable to actually hurt you. This Adam Soon character, very 21st century. There's also, before I get ahead of myself, because a lot of things happen this episode, I'm just kind of spewing it out. There's a bunch of really fun scenes that happen at the gala. For instance, Rafi and Rios have this little conversation about how Rios is low-key falling in love with that doctor. It's always great how prominent figures in Star Trek go and time travel and then fall in love with people. The original instance is that one episode with Kirk and Edith Keeler, the city on the edge of forever. I think it's called one of my top 10 favorite episodes in all of Star Trek, honestly. Rios loves the real cigars. He loves the food. Rafi, on the other hand, just likes that 7 of 9 is having fun and that she's not even a Borg right now and she doesn't have the burdens of her implants. And there is another scene in this episode where they put like a bourbon down on the table and I'm looking really hard at the number on this bourbon because I think it's a reference or something. I think they might be. I typed in the numbers. I couldn't find one, but Rafi is just kind of looking at this bourbon and she's denying the uh, cigar from Rios because they're alluding back to her substance abuse problems and I think it's really great how they do this with Rafi. They do it very tastefully, very subtly, and at the right moments. You know what I mean? It's, it's a very huge thing about her character is her previous substance abuse problems and it's the reason why she currently has that shaky relationship with her son. Adam Soong, back to that. Tattles on Picard. It's very funny seeing all these like grown ass uh, 6'2 big bodyguards just bully this little small old man around this venue. I have no idea how Picard it manages to evade them. Of course he's a Starfleet captain so the very minimum he should be able to James Bond his way out of Gala away from security guards but he doesn't do this without help. Like I'm now tying this back in okay. Agnes in the Borg Queen she has technology inside of her body actually does an EMP 
an electromagnetic pulse and turns off all the light. That's when we get probably the dopest scene ever. I'm pretty sure in the last season of Picard, we had the actress who plays Soji. She sang the Bluebird song and it was like a backtrack to that one scene. But now we actually have an actress, Allison Pill, going out and singing. And if this is actually Allison Pill singing, I am so impressed because, dude, this just sounds beautiful. It's a beautiful scene. Gave me goosebumps. Why is she low key becoming one of the strongest new Star Trek characters out of New Trek? Last season, I'm pretty sure we were all on the boat of like, hey, we kind of had a little magnifying glass on Agnes. We were criticizing the hell out of her, but dude, I honestly think she's easily my top three favorite characters from the series. Her and Rios are so crazy good. Her and Rios have so many good lines, so many very wholesome, gratifying scenes of them interacting with each other. There was even this scene where the Borg Queen kind of took control of Agnes and made her uh, reach in and kiss Rios, and she was even speaking from her own thoughts, like telling Rios how she actually felt about him. It was really good to see I love the singing number, how she was using that as a distraction to help Picard get to Renee. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Instantly, just like right after I saw that scene is getting an eight out of 10 because this is just like last episode. I think I gave last episode like a seven, 7.5. It's just like last episode. This episode is just slightly better, even more entertaining. And I loved the content in this episode. I cannot stress that enough. Also, a lot of people are saying that Chris Rios is such a good character that he deserves to get his own spinoff show with the Stargazer. After seeing this episode, I am 1000% convinced of that. The actor who plays Chris Rios is an amazing actor. And Chris Rios is a character that I can honestly see heading his own like series or mini series. Because Agnes does this performance and after she gets done with that, she's like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? She starts building up all these endorphins and it was the Borg Queen's plan all along to have Agnes do these things and have these endorphins build up in the right combination for her to, I guess, take over Agnes's body and allow her psyche to surpass Agnes. So after that, at that point, Agnes just kind of scurries off away from the rest of the gang. She is no longer with the gang. She's extremely taken over by the Borg Queen, and at the end of the episode, the very last scene is Agnes just kind of walking into 21st century Earth with the Borg Queen to, you know, tear shit up. Picard manages to evade security, you know, the ones that were sent to him by Adam Soon, who snitched on him. He managed to evade the security, approach Renee Picard, give her a beautiful Picard speech. It was great. I just thought that it was just for one thing kind of cute that old Picard is talking to Renee and giving her the old Picard speech. I felt like it was pretty well written and I just enjoyed every bit of it. I cannot really sit here and say there was any part in the dialogue that I was uncontent with. I thought it was pretty good. It was pretty convincing and it was just kind of amazing seeing two Picards from different points in the timeline, essentially ancestors, just relate to each other so well. There was a couple times when Renee Picard was talking to Picard and she was looking at him like, don't I know you from somewhere before? I feel like we really know each other, have this connection. It was just really great to see. Uh, before I forget, Talon is very protective of Renee. She almost doesn't want to let Picard talk to her because she's like, what if Q's right? What if she's not ready to do this? Picard then does his talk no jutsu and assures Talon that she is ready to do this. Another thing, they do shed some more light on Talon, her uh, position as an essentially like a Gary Seven in this episode. Why the hell does she look like Lars? There's no explanation for that still. It's almost getting a little bit corny if they're just not going to explain that, how there's two identical doppelganger beings that are definitely not even the same species uh, on different points in the timeline. It makes no sense except for the fact that I was reading the subtitles in this episode and for a second Talon like gargles something out of her mouth. She just kind of grunts and it says that she's speaking in Romulan and Picard doesn't pick this up. I don't know if this is accurate. Maybe the subtitles are wrong, but it essentially said that when Talon grunted, she was speaking in Romulan. So that is like the only explicit tie-in or connection so far that Talon and Laris could maybe be the same person. Maybe they stole Laris out of a certain timeline and just made her an agent, possibly. So yeah, Picard is then escorting Renee to the astronauts to finish the gala. She's got a whole bunch of confidence and wisdom from Picard instilled in her. And then, and then out of nowhere, beep, beep, mother. 
Elon Musk is coming with that large share majority in Twitter to essentially murder Picard because Adam Soong whips the hell out of his Tesla and slams it right into Picard and it is definitely one of the funniest things in all of Star Trek I think to just witness old man frail ass Picard just being absolutely bodied by a Tesla at full speed okay and Adam Soong is so so salty that he does not manage to kill Renee Picard with this Tesla I am absolutely laughing the whole time I'm watching these scenes. He goes back to, you know, his Blade Runner daughter's cocoon, and he walks in. He is almost like in a drunken stupor. He's so psychotic about how he couldn't even manage to assassinate either, like, an old man or just, like, a lady astronaut at a gala. He's so disappointed in himself, he talks very cryptically to his daughter. She almost gets scared. After he leaves or after he goes to sleep or something, she gets on to the computer. She gets on the curved widescreen. She does a whole bunch of research to learn that, you know, her dad is a disgraced scientist. Everybody hates him. He practices eugenics in genetic experiments. And that also, it's definitely alluded that she's probably just a clone in a long line of clones. I theorize that Adam Soon originally had a daughter. She died. He probably took some essence of her, cloned her, was transferring the sentience over and over again. Because we see in this episode that she's looking through these video logs. He's doing and he's talking just about previous experiments. They all have names that are kind of similar. It's just very clear to me. He's had a whole bunch of dead clone daughters and the current Soji actress one that she's playing right now is the last and final daughter and he's really hoping to save her. So that's really cool. Right before I saw that scene, I was almost thinking like, wow, this Brett Spiner character is so freaking cool, but he almost needs a little bit more depth in seeing that, you know, he's actually insane and he's replicating his daughter over and over again, bringing sentience into the world and just murdering it over and over again for experiments. Total Blade Runner vibes here, and I'm totally loving it. That was the depth I needed. Rafi and Seven, Allison Pill, Agnes Gerardi, everybody was looking mad fine in this episode, by the way, and they're dresses. They are looking fit, all dressed up for the gala. Rafi and Agnes especially look real good. And lastly, basically the last thing I believe I haven't mentioned yet in this episode is that Picard is trapped inside of his own consciousness. He is in a coma, except that he's definitely doing something up there. He's having a whole bunch of flashbacks about his mother. I feel like next episode we're finally going to get that lore dump on what is going on with Yvette Picard and how Maurice Picard is definitely looking abusive as hell at this point. Dude, I was looking at that flashback and there was almost like monsters and spooky things and it almost seemed like something out of a horror film or a scary horror house that you go to for Halloween. Whatever Picard is doing in there, some shit is going on. Using her neuro-optic interceptor, she proposed a plan to go inside Picard's mind and basically I think that we're just going to get a total Dr. Bashir next episode of Talon traversing Picard's mind and we're going to get a huge lore dump with the Yvette Picard and Maurice Picard, why Picard is potentially the way he is, what his upbringing was like, and seeing some of the potential abuse that was in his childhood. But yeah, dude, that episode, 8 out of 10, fire. I think Terry Matalas is doing a very good job. I think this episode and this season as a whole is just continually entertaining and kind of just keeps on getting better every episode. But what do you guys think? Leave it down in the comments below. I read all comments, so be sure to leave one. They are my favorite thing about YouTube. I still am trying to come up with a 10,000 subscriber goal, so if you have any ideas, leave that down below as well. And less than a month until we get strange new worlds. Oh boy, I'm going to have the time of my life reviewing that. I seriously feel like I've been waiting my entire life for that series, so it's going to be really gratifying to finally watch it. With all that being said, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. If you would like to discuss any of the topics that we discuss here on the channel, join the Discord. Link is in the bottom of every video. And with all that being said, hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Live long and prosper. Can I subscribe?